All right, unit three, day number four. And really, guys, you've learned everything that you have possibly needed to know about transformations. All we're going to end up doing now is taking and composing them. What that really means is a composition means two or more transformations. That's what's going to go on there. Oops, sorry about that. Two or more transformations are going to take place. So you might have like a reflection and a translation, or you might have a translation and then a rotation and so forth. Okay. Some of the most common ones that they like to do or combinations that they like to do in terms of compositions is usually the glide reflection. And they'll call it a glide reflection. It really is a translation then followed by a reflection. Okay. So these, this is probably the most common one that you run into. Uh, it's pretty easy. They just end up wanting you to do one thing and then end up doing another. So it's pretty straightforward. Now we're going to practice a couple of these. A, a glide reflection, very similar, like when you're walking with your feet. Okay, Your feet are actually a glide reflection of one another. If you think, unless you got one really big, ugly toe, and then it doesn't look like the same on the other side. So, <laughs> but if they're glide reflections. Now, let's try a glide reflection. Now, I'm not going to end up doing pretty much all of this particular glide reflection, but I'll give you the idea. The key to being good at doing any kind of composition is to understand that there's one step that's being done, and then once that step is completed, then a second step is taking place on adjusting the actual object. So if I take a look at this very first one, if I say, hey, I want the triangle, which starts out at these particular points. This is your starting guy. And then it says it wants to find the image after it's been translated over a certain amount. That's step one. And then reflected over the y-axis. That's step two. So you got to realize what the two individual steps are going to be. Now I'm going to do the first one which is a 0, 4 translation, and that's written in vector format. You're going to do nothing to the, the x, and you're going to add 4 to the y. Well, that seems pretty easy. These are just going to be like 6 and add 4 to that one is 6 and 3. And if I do nothing to that one, that's 10 and uh, add 4 to this one, that would be 2. And then if I ended up doing nothing to that one, that would be 5, and I'd add 4 to this one, and I'd be at 1. All right? Those are the new locations after step one has actually taken place. Now, you can see those are the same coordinates that are listed right here because they're ready to do step number two, which is the rule of changing it over the y-axis. This comes off your rule sheet. If you change this, reflecting something over the y-axis, you change the x. So this would end up being negative six and three, and this one would be negative 10 and two, and this one would be negative five and one. And once you got all those written out, these now become what is the second movement, and that's where it ended up in the end. So first movement was this is the triangle where it was at. This is where it ended up step one. It got translated up by four, and then this one is where it got reflected over the y-axis. So it's really just a two-step process or a combination or composition, okay? Now, what I want to do on these is probably not move all of them, but let's just move one of them, like Q. Where would Q end up if I followed this glide reflection? Well, if it started at 2 and 5, if I translated it based on this next idea, where would Q prime end up? Well, to subtract 2 from the X, that would be at 0 and 5 then. And then where would it end up, Q be at, if I reflected it over the x-axis. Well, if I reflect over the x-axis, I change the y. That becomes negative or x negative y. So if I change this and change just the y component, it'd be 0 and negative 5. And that would be where it would end up after a glide reflection. Now I'm going to pause right here. You try 1b, see if you can figure it out, and I'll come back to the answers. All right, so 1B, let's see how you guys did. I did a translation of negative 3, negative 3 for that vector notation for this one. And all I did was just subtract 3 from each one. There's the first movement. And then a Y over, a, a, a reflection over Y equals X ends up changing the 
values from x, y into y, x is what it does. Sorry. It just flips it is what the rule is there. You can check your cheat sheet to figure that out. And all I did was flip the idea. And that's where Q should have ended up. All right. So all you're seeing right here is just the fact that it's multiple steps to actually get through. Now, glide reflections are the most common one, but that's not the only combination you can do. Like, say, for instance, on this next one, we've got these th these two individual points is where it's going to actually start. But then they want to know what's going to happen to the image if it's reflected first, there's step one, and then it's rotated 90 degrees, which is a counterclockwise rule. That's counter. Because if they don't say, we assume that it's counter, that's step two. Well, let's see what happens here. If, what's the rule for reflecting over the x axis? Well, the rule for reflecting over the x is to change the y. So c would end up at negative 7 and negative 1. Or d would end up at negative 3 and negative 2. So there's that particular coordinate. And then that's these guys right here being moved now with a 90 degree counter rule and the 90 degree counter rule is, is that you flip and change the y and that would mean if i flipped it and changed the y that'd be 1 and negative 7 and this one would be 2 and negative 3 and that would be the new location let's see if i got it in the right spot i got uh 1 and negative 7 look see it is down there at the bottom and 2 and negative 3 there's the d one right there so pretty straightforward, it's just follow your rules is really what's going on there. Now, I'm going to pick a coordinate here, and I want you guys to see if you can get the coordinate in the right spot of where A double prime will be, because I'm going to pick A right here, which is at negative 6 and negative 2. You tell me where A double prime turns out to be once I do these two translation reflection so that's a glide reflection and this is a rotation translation i'm going to pause it you see if you can get it in the right spot all right now here's what i ended up getting for 2a original point oh i shouldn't have put a prime on that a original point over there at negative six negative two then it just translated moved right and down one and that doesn't look like it moved down one i moved it down two Ooh, messed it all up Pause right there. Let's fix it, G. Now it looks like it's in the right spot. Wow, super easy to mess one of those things up. But making sure that you moved it over 3 down 1 and then reflected it over the y-axis. There's its new location right there. Try it again. This time around, I'll try not to mess up. You try it again with the letter A on the next one to B. And here's what I came up with for A double prime. Let's see if I've got it in the right spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, negative two. So there's A. A double prime would be the rotation around 180 degrees. That would be six and two. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. That's A prime. That looks right. That looks like 180 degree rotation. And then I'm going to move it left and up four. Um, so he says four, six, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's your A double prime, and that looks like it's been moved to an up four. Yep, there's where we're looking for, for our A double prime. All right? So the key here is really not to overthink it, but more importantly, just to follow your steps of what's actually going on. And more importantly than anything, make sure that you're using your transformation rules on your transformation rule sheet. This is super key in having it close by and making sure that you can do it effectively. All right. Good luck on your day four assignment and get her done, people. Get her done.